come down here. Up there is rattlesnake country. Now, our special guest host, Mary Lou Retton, is used to being in high places, but not necessarily with our slithering friends. The retractable fangs, the thermal receptive tips, the chemo receptive tongue, and his 2200 vision with his elliptical pupil in his eye are all mechanisms for capturing prey. And that's what makes a rattlesnake a nocturnal, heat seeking, spring loaded, chemo receptive hypodermic needle. He lives on the grounds of the Tonka Verde Dude Ranch in Arizona, and I'm glad of that. Like most people, I get kind of queasy when I see snakes. Just knowing that they make their homes on hills like this and sun themselves in the afternoon keeps me walking on city streets. But if I ever decided that I wanted to learn how to handle a snake, I'd go visit Jerry Brewer, who doesn't think of handling a rattler as a risky business. There are true phobics. Phobia is hard to overcome. And when people come and call me or they come out and want to go out on a snake hunt and, and get over their phobias, you have to do it slow at their pace. But if they wish to get over their phobia, they can come out and slowly learn about the animal. And with education, you totally eliminate fear with an understanding of the animal. Well, I met Jerry about six and a half years ago. He called me and wanted to know if we needed a snake program at the ranch and we certainly did and he came out and has been here ever since first as a program and then as our naturalist full time the first thing you have to do to get people over their fear of, of rattlesnakes here at the ranch is to actually have them go out and, and face the animal and get right out into the desert and here they're going with all these terrible thoughts and then when you do meet one you find that he's a very gentle and docile creature which simply wants to be left alone and seeing is believing you can't even get him to strike unless you totally aggravate him now if you really encroach on this animal and actually approach him you can probably draw a strike he'll strike about seven and a quarter feet per second People know that this is a wild snake, it's not a captive animal, he's not trained, and all of a sudden you debunk all these terrible stories that they've heard, and then they become a believer. He does not want to have to make a stand like this on something like a human being. I think I was born afraid of snakes, and it got worse as I got older. I had a couple of frightening encounters with them, and it just became a phobia, a terror. Snakes are much more afraid of us than we are of them. He just seems to want to run away. Yes, he wants to leave. See, we successfully pin him here. Take a look at the mechanism, the mechanism which most people fear. It really was necessary in this job for me not to be afraid of snakes. Get this fellow to say, ah. The guests would tell me that they had here. seen a snake and... They realized by my reaction that I was terrified of them. And here he has, a, oh, right. he has insidious fangs. He has a double fang on the left side, and he has a single fang on the right. Now, Just to go out and see one on the desert would ruin my whole day. I would come running back to safety and be afraid to go out for several days. These are enzymatic proteins which assist the snake in digesting his prey. This is a benefactor to the desert or the forest. They belong. They do have a place in nature. A show on television that had snakes, two looks, and I changed jobs. I just couldn't stay in the same room. What we'll do is return him back exactly to where he was and let him be, because this is where he belongs. Now, Phyllis at one time could not even look at one in a book or stand one on TV or anything. Cold chills and tears, but a lot of interest. It was something I really wanted to do very badly. And I figured now was the time. I, I've worked up to this all this, this time, all these years, and today was finally it. Can, can you pull Sheer terror, uh, partly. Oh, God. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, that is very good. Fantastic. Look at that.
Today was sort of graduation day, I guess, but I actually screwed up all my courage and picked one up off the ground, and that was a step. That took an awful lot of fortitude from Phyllis to do that. She is now a graduate of Jerry's Snake School, I guess. <laughs> I wonder if he's as scared as I am. <laughs> <laughs> My whole goal about educating people about snakes is to help people enjoy the outdoors without the fear of meeting this creature. And if they do meet this creature, it's still an enjoyable experience. Instead of a terrible trauma, which people make it, to totally throw this away and make it enjoyable and leave the creature alone. That way the animal I love isn't destroyed, and he stays intact where he should be, and that is in the wild. Unfortunately, when man meets snake, the snake is the loser. He ends up on a mantle wall or on a belt or a skin. I've never had a snake shoot a weapon at me, and they did in Vietnam. I, I never had a snake deliberately send me to Vietnam, but people did. They both have their likes and their dislikes. Some people are snakes. And I hate to say that about snakes. <laughs>